the senator, while indoctrinated, could not explain his toxicity. You should not listen to men's rights advocates if you want to know what they have to say. What's up, party people? And also you NPCs out there, and welcome to HBR News number 181. Weinstein accuser lied. Hillary Clinton loses security clearance. I am your host, Brian Martinez, and I am here with my panelists, who are at least 164th Russian troll bot, to look at the best feels, funnies, and what the fucks to discuss Clam Slam Badger style. Let's get started, shall we? Today's panel will consist of the usual suspects, Mike J, Hannah Wallen, Dr. Random McCam, and me, the Doge in Charge. We have a great show lined up for you guys today, so please be sure to continue the conversations both in the chat as well as in the comment section. On this week's HBR News Show, we're going to be talking about the collapse of one of the cases against Harvey Weinstein. We're going to be talking about the anime Goblin Slayer and all the triggering that's been happening around it. Witches against Kavanaugh and much more. So stick around; it's actually going to be a good time, and also kind of a kind of an appropriately Octobery, um, you know, couple of stories too. And also stick around afterwards for the patron-only after show. Have you ever had the idea in your head that objectification of men's bodies should be treated the same as object- objectification of women's bodies? Well, it's time to get educated on why you're wrong, as the National Post Sabrina Meadow explains why you are a rapist and probably also a racist bigot because reasons for having such an idea in your head. Anyway, if you'd like to participate in our after shows, either as an audience member or a participant, please consider becoming a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash honeybadgerradio. And if you don't want to wake up one morning to find yourself unable to find our content because YouTube finally dropped the axe on our channels, go to badgerfeed.com. That's badgerfeed.com. And lastly, if you are watching this video and you are on our main channel, Honey Badger Radio, please subscribe to Badger Livestreams, which is the channel that the live streams take place. There you'll be able to participate in the live chat as well as send super chats. So we'd like to try to migrate the audience, you know, stay subscribed to HBR because we're going to have videos there too. But for the live streams, come over to Badger live streams and give us a sub there as well. That way we can keep the conversation going. You can also follow us on Twitch, uh, which is twitch.tv, I think, forward slash Honey Badger Radio. And we also have a Facebook presence as well. All of our live streams go up at all of those places at the same time. And you never know when one of them, one of our presences could get zucked or jacked or whatever. And then we have to like find a new home. So may as well follow us everywhere. All right. So with that all out of the way, the one thing I wanted to say before we get started, because this is something that I found out about uh, today or not today, but yesterday, uh, it is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. October is National Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and the Domestic Violence Coalition of Van Buren County, um, well, they're they're doing a um, uh, they're doing like a fundraiser. But I wanted to bring this to your attention in case you didn't know. This month is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, so if you see discussions uh, around that, be sure to remember. That domestic violence uh, is more of a reciprocal experience for both men and women. It is not unique to them. Also, uh, children should be considered. And essentially, this is not a gendered problem. And that is not how it should be discussed. So just keep that in mind. Uh, as, as we see, probably there'll be some talk around uh, domestic violence in October. So, oh, and speaking of domestic violence, we have a story that's a little bit related to that coming up in the program. Anyway, so let's uh, let's get into the stories. And I guess I'm opening up. This one is done by my wife, Stapler. And it is about Hillary Clinton. So Hillary Clinton is no longer has her security clearance. A letter released by Grassley this Friday revealed that Hillary Clinton has lost her security clearance. Back in August, um, on August 30th, in addition, five of her staffers had also lost clearance during Cheryl Mills, who was one of Clinton's top aides. The other staffers had their name redacted. 
According to the Daily Caller, the removal of her security clearances stems from her, quote, mishandling of classified material on her personal email servers, as the FBI assessed that it was, quote, reasonably likely that foreign entity, a foreign entity was able to hack her servers. Grassley had sought an update on a clearance review of Clinton's email servers back in March of 2017. In that letter, he wrote, any other government workers who engaged in such serious offenses would, at a minimum, have their clearances suspended pending an investigation. The failure to do so has given the public the impression that Secretary Clinton and her associates receive special treatment. So, I don't, that, it's really a short story. I thought it was kind of funny um, that, you know, she, she lost some of her, uh, let's say, for the lack of a better term, privileges. Um, so, <laughs> just, uh, words. It's giving the public the impression that Secretary Clinton received <laughs> special treatment. Yeah. It's not that she did or anything. <laughs> uh, it's a bit of a tactical choice, though, because if, uh, if you've read the article, it's not that she lost them, it's that she gave them up. And from my understanding, it's a lot easier to get these back if you give them up, you can get them back later. But if you actually have them taken from you, it's damn near impossible to get them back. Yeah, but you know, if you hand in your resignation after you've been written up all but the last of the number of times it takes to get you fired, it doesn't change the fact that you were going to get fired. And Hillary Clinton was going to lose her security clearance. So she gave it up voluntarily so that she'd be able to get it back easier. And so that she'd be able to save face by saying, oh, they didn't take it away from me. I gave it up. You can't fire me. I quit. Exactly. And I, you know, as much as people want to say, well, we got to be even handed about this and everything. And that that was a sneaky move. And it's pretty typical, honestly, um, of the Clinton camp. It's not something that I'm not going to attribute that to the whole left because that's not that wouldn't be true. But it's very typical of the Clinton camp. You know, oh, no, uh, uh. You know, we, we, we haven't done something specifically wrong. We did something parallel to something wrong that isn't as bad. And, uh, and that totally, totally makes up for the fact that we were heading towards this thing that was wrong. And, uh, you know, it gets us out of accountability for it. And that's, that's basically Hillary Clinton in a nutshell. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, um... Well, I mean, Hannah pretty much put it right on there. I mean, it's definitely a tactical choice. I, I think it's it's uh, it's kind of funny because uh, it, it does it could work to serve her better in the future, but I think people can see through it. So, uh, all right. So, I mean, that I, this is really it's not a huge story, but I thought I'd I'd mention it. So, if there's no other thoughts on that, we can we move on to the next one. We got like seven to get through, so. Okay, um, Mr. Mike J, would you do the honors, please? Why, certainly. So, the anime Goblin Slayer has made its debut on uh, Crunchyroll and Funimation, where it immediately sent shockwaves through the community. The series, at first glance, appears to be standard anime fantasy fare, which follows a plucky group of eager female adventurers who's taken on a contract to Red Cave of Goblins. However, the inexperienced group is quickly... Uh, okay, I should, I should mention spoilers. I, I wanted to get that out of the way. I didn't have that in the write-up, but yeah, spoilers for the first episode, so you've been warned. The inexperienced group is quickly overwhelmed, which uh, leads to the majority of them being rather gruesomely raped and murdered. From that point on, the titular Goblin Slayer character appears, appears and... Well, he, uh, he slays goblins. While unexpected deaths of characters isn't new to fans of anime, the scenes of rape certainly were surprising to some. So who's to blame for this? Well, Crunchyroll shoulders some of it as they labeled Goblin Slayer TVPG. <laughs> <laughs> After massive amounts of negative backlash, Crunchyroll released the following statement. Many of you have reached out to us about the graphic nature of Goblin Slayer. Thank you. We've added a warning to the episode and are building better practices in providing information you need to make decisions about what you watch. 
We would like to apologize to anyone who encountered the episode and was disturbed. Thank you for sharing your concerns with us. Oh, Crunchyroll, you had one job. Also, um, there's the meme. I don't know if you wanted to uh, mention anything about it. Is this this is like the people reacting to it, I guess? My yeah, yeah, there was a... Uh... A, a bit of a, a bit of a Twitter salt mine opened, and uh, we got some <laughs> we got some pretty juicy tidbits out of there. <laughs> um, yeah, so okay, so this is basically a case of uh, edgy. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't even I don't know that it's particularly edgy, but uh, some like edgy anime comes out and it's mis it's mislabeled in terms of the audience that it's for, and people freak out, right? So there's nothing. Is there anything about glorifying rape or encouraging rape culture or anything like that i just see people saying it's trash oh rape culture um, yeah soul hunter says yeah. i'm really on the fence with goblin slayer i'm really getting over the rape culture being thrown at us over and over again it's never un it's never necessary okay my, so my favorite yeah. is the guy at the top who who calls that uh, the the slaughter is definitely fascist. Oh yeah, that's right. There was a there was an article written about uh, the fascism of this of of anime in general. So yeah, but but it's it's just I like now that that fascism is just a catch all term for anything yeah. that I don't like. Yeah, yeah. Like you know, it was fascism and rape is white supremacy or something. It's some combination of those. <laughs> Yeah, really. It's not even uh, honestly. I've seen some of it. It's not even that edgy. It's. I mean, it's. It's like. It's. Um. It's like. It's like berserk light. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And it, it's. I think it. It's played for. There's some stuff that's done there for shock value. Like in the first episode, you can see everything is so saccharine and positive and and shit that you're like, okay, something's gonna go horribly wrong. And then when it does, you're like, ah, oh, yep, there it is. I mean, <laughs> so. I don't know. What whatever people find something else to watch. You almost think when you hear how people are like losing their shit over it, either um, against it or even some people heard it for it that are like, "Oh my god, it's so adult." Um, it's like ha you just did you just find this shit because this has been like this is not new and it's not really breaking new ground. Yeah, the, the manga has been out for over two years, so it's like a lot of people also really don't have anyone but their self to blame on this one. Yeah, exactly. Say Crunchyroll's a tiny bit responsible just because it almost seems like, um, in the words of Appabend, like they didn't even watch it. Mm -hmm. Like they just threw it up mm -hmm. there and like, oh, uh, a new thing? Okay, well, we'll put it up. This seems this seems perfectly fine. Self-sabotage there. You know, they <laughs> show it to people that they know are going to get mad about it. And, and yeah, self-sabotage. Crunchyroll's kind of been going down the shitter for a while. They've become alarmingly progressive yeah well oh you know su sunshine spice or whatever the fuck it's called but um i'm sorry i i have to stay i have to stay with crunchy roll it's the only place i can get jojo so i'm gonna have to stay until it's over but uh okay so we got a two dollar canadian donation from frank tomeo and he says i'm a fascist yay yeah, be a good one, son. <laughs> yeah just just be a good one um, be one of the good fascists. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, well, let's... Well, you know, if you, if you ever get into an argument with somebody about the show, just, uh, just tell them you found, uh, something that's a little more appropriate to their age, and, and, and don't tell them what it is, but drop a link in, in, in their, uh, Twitter or whatever to them, so they can, can watch, uh, Meet the Feebles. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and watch the fireworks. All right, so let's move on to, or anything by Ralph Bakshi. Let's move on to uh, the next story. We're going to be talking about Mini Me. And this is another one from Mike J. Apparently, you did two in a row here. So, yeah, time for, time for a double upload, guys. So, uh, it's been seven months since the passing of actor Vern Troyer, better known as Mini Me in the Austin Powers series of movies. Troyer's comical movie roles masked a history of depression and alcoholism. While not entirely clear at the time of his death in April, the Los Angeles County Medical Examiner Coroner has concluded from the autopsy performed that Troyer's cause of death was alcohol abuse and it has been ruled a suicide. 
At his time of death, Troyer's blood alcohol content was over three times the legal limit. In a statement made to the actor's social media pages, a spokesperson for Troyer said the following, quote, over the years, he struggled and won, struggled and won, struggled and fought some more. But unfortunately, this time was too much. Depression and suicide are very serious issues. You never know what kind of battle someone is going through inside. Be kind to one another and always know it's never too late to reach out to someone for help. Wow. So three times the legal limit is evidence of suicide? Uh, it was the evidence of ongoing alcoholism that that was cited as the reason. It, it, it can kill you if, 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 you're, if you're addicted to, to alcohol and then you stop drinking it for ages and then, and then drink a skin full in one night. That can absolutely kill you. Especially if, if you're as, as, as the size of Vern Troy. And, uh, it's, it could be uh, he accidentally drank too much one night. If it needs uh, an, uh, an autopsy to figure it out, then I imagine it's up in the air. I don't know. Uh, I, I heard that I heard that his um, uh, people in in his condition, like um, they have this thing where they're they they actually live in constant pain because they're um, and I, I could be wrong here, but this is just something that somebody told me. I guess like the the internal organs keep growing, even though the body and the skeleton stay the same size. So it's it actually starts to feel like really painful, and I wonder um, if that was something that he was struggling with. Um, and I know, you know, just being uh, a little person is tough too, you know. Is it, we call them dwarves? I don't know. I don't know what the right word is, but you guys get what I'm saying from. He's, yeah, it, he was a small man. It depend on the condition um, because there's, there are actually several different conditions that can cause you to be a little person. So sometimes that happens and sometimes other things happen, but... Um, Chronic pain, if there's chronic pain involved, is going to get worse as you age. And one of the problems with this is, uh, and I, did he did he live in the U.S. or did he live? Um, he lived in the U.S. He, he lived in the U.S. That's okay. So for people who don't know, what's been going on with chronic pain patients over the last 30 years is, is really reprehensible on the part of our government. Uh if you have chronic pain, you cannot just deal with it. If it's serious pain, you know, it's, it's the same as if you had somebody poking at you all day long, you would eventually hoff, haul off and hit them. Uh, you, you would not put up with that. Over time, it would get more and more annoying. It would get to the point where it wasn't just being poked at. It would feel like a major assault. Um, it's basically what harassment is. And, Chronic pain is your body harassing your brain, and uh, I've I've watched this happen to somebody close to me over time, and and it's uh, this is kind of hard to talk about because of of that, but just imagine um, instead of somebody poking at you, if somebody was hitting you with a ball bat all the time, mm -hmm. you get up in the morning and there they are with that ball bat. Smacking you in the gut, smacking you in the knees, smacking you in the back. Uh, doesn't matter where. Uh, and it never goes away. And you call the cops, and uh, the cops tell you that, you know, well, they, they really can't do anything because you've got, you've got other people that are being fended off by cops with their baseball bats, you know, being fended off by cops. And this one just happened to get through, and you're not allowed to have any more cops, so you have to deal with this ball bat. Um, yeah. It wouldn't make any sense to you, you know, it wouldn't be very reasonable. And, uh, and the reality is uh, the, 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 the situation for people with chronic pain is largely due to that. Um, the government coming along and saying, well, we're going to place limits. Insurance companies lobbying, we're going to place limits. We're not, we're going to, we're going to tell your doctor what your doctor can prescribe. And we're not going to be reasonable about it, right? Um Obviously, there's a limit to how much medication you can take before it hurts you. Any medicine is that way. Uh, there's even a limit to how many vitamins you can take before they hurt you. But that should be between you and your doctor, not you and the government, not you and your insurance company, but you and your doctor. And, uh, and it's not. And then right. the other thing is, 
they're also they're allowed to say, well, we're going to take away your pain medicine, but we're not going to cover any alternative treatments. So if you have chronic pain that could be alleviated by, say, something like massage therapy, you can have that three times a year, but we're not going to allow you your pain medicine. Oh, and if this surgery would help with your chronic pain, we're not going to cover that either. We're going to bend over backwards to find reasons why you can't have that surgery, but we're still not going to cover your pain medicine, and we're not going to cover much massage therapy. We're not going to cover your physical therapy. You're just screwed, and if you need your pain medicine for years and years and years, we're going to call you an addict, even if you don't increase your need for that medicine over time. The pain doesn't go away. You got uh, you know, degenerative disc disease. You've got arthritis, you know, something that doesn't ever go away. Well, if it's not being cured, then you're an addict. Mm -hmm. That is where chronic pain patients are. So if you have chronic pain and you have depression, you do end up looking for alternatives. And I've had family members go looking for alternatives and end up her on heroin and die. I've had family members that have lost their ability to do anything. Like, just just anything. Um, I've seen family members go from being public servants and full-time workers and community activists to sitting in the living room and watching television all day because getting up and moving around and doing things hurts too much. And I've watched family members break down and cry uh, like somebody died because they're in pain and there isn't anything they can do about it. And if that's one of the things that, that Mr. Troyer was going through, I mean, I can understand what he did. Mm -hmm. it's, it's heartbreaking and it's angering and it needs to stop. Well, I can tell you what he had. So I looked him up and, uh, he had uh, a, an extreme case of cartilage hair hypoplasia, also known as mucusic type meta, uh, metaphyseal con chondroplasia. Anyway, it's a rare genetic disorder. Symptoms may include, uh, of course, his, his short limb dwarfism due to skeletal dysplasia, variable levels of immunodeficiency, and a predisposition to cancer. So he has um, th no hair on his body, hence, you know. Uh, his baldness, short limb dwarfism, hyper uh, extend extensible joints of his hands and feet. His spine was abnormal. He had neutropenia, uh, a defective antibody and cell mediated uh, immunity. So he had a, a host of problems that uh, were physical and it was genetic. It was something that he um, likely inherited. And I think that th when you have that many issues, um, it probably comes with a lot of depression. I think that he was likely living with a lot of pain. So um, this is, and, and you know, it's, it's like a story about an actor that um, died and it was likely, they're ruling it as a suicide right now. But what we are also looking at, you know, is a, a person that, somebody said read these things before. Well, I'm sorry, I just, I, it didn't come up until now, but. Um, we are we are looking at uh, another case of a male suicide, and you know sometimes it's it's for these kinds of reasons. He probably didn't have the support system that uh, he needed. Maybe there was nothing that could have been done. I don't know, but I thought nonetheless it was something worth sharing. So, especially if you guys were fans of of his from you know the the movies he's been in and stuff. So. Yeah, this is this is one where it it it's really important if you know somebody who's in a situation where they've got a chronic disorder, whether it's chronic pain, whether it's an immune disorder, anything like that. Just check on them every so often, you know, mm -hmm. see how they're doing. Um, see, you don't have to, you know, be glad handing and and try to prop them up or anything. Just let them know that there's somebody thinking of them and and that wants to spend time with them and stuff because um those are our conditions and it like i said it doesn't matter if it's chronic pain or if it's an immune disorder or if it's a different disorder that anything that just just repeatedly causes you problems throughout your life is going to lead to depression and it can lead to suicide 
that's one of the pe groups of people that is is high risk for it is people with chronic health conditions yeah exactly okay so uh if there's nothing else i guess we'll move on to the next story but uh r.i.p and peace um mr troyer and uh yeah i know that was a while back but it's still worth bringing up so Here's where things get interesting. So the Weinstein accusations appear to be falling apart, or at least they're starting to. Harvey Weinstein faces up to life in prison on charges of rape, predatory sex assault, and criminal sex acts for the alleged attack on three women prosecuted by Manhattan District Attorney Cyrus Vance Jr.'s office. Weinstein's defense lawyer, Ben Braffman, has argued the movie producer should be dismissed because prosecutors hid the fact that he had a long-term consensual relationship with at least one of these accusers. This accuser, Lucia Evans, says Weinstein forced her to perform oral sex on him in 2004, when she was a 21-year-old college student and aspiring actress. However, according to page 6, prosecutors have found a written account that the sexual encounter was actually consensual. A prior employer of Evans turned over the personal writings she left on the company computer, which appear to contradict her grand jury testimony, a law enforcement source said. The writings indicate it was consensual, friendly, a source told the Post. It has caused a split in the Manhattan District Attorney's Office. Some believe the charges should be dropped and that there is a problem with this complaint. Another unnamed accuser exchanged 400 emails with Weinstein during the weeks and years after the alleged rape. In a February 2017 email sent nearly four years after the alleged sex attack, she wrote, quote, I love you, always do, but I hate feeling like a booty call, smiley face. Ass Assistant District Attorney Joan Iluzi Orban countered in court papers that none of the emails show the accuser denying that she was raped and insisted the presentation to the grand jury was fair and complete. In an update to this story, the Times reported that the charge brought by Lucia Evans has been dismissed. The case's lead detective, Nicholas, Nicholas DiGaudio, has admitted to withholding information from the Times. Quote, Prosecutors revealed that a friend of Evans has told them the actress had confided that she performed oral sex on Weinstein willingly in return for work. Duh. Furthermore, the unidentified friend said that she had given to Gaudio this information before Weinstein was indicted. Yet the detective had failed to inform the district attorney's office about these important details. According to the letter, DeGaudio had also told the friend that less is more and that she was not obliged to cooperate with prosecutors. DeGaudio once championed the Daily Beast as a hashtag MeToo hero. Like, way back, right? In 2015, there was a case that he was involved in. And he is no longer, is no longer involved in the inves investigation. However, the bias shown by DeGaudio could potentially still lead to the dismissal of the entire indictment. We will be following this to give you more updates as things continue to unfold. So, that's kind of a bomb, isn't it? Yeah, well, I, at this point, I'm starting to not be surprised by anything. Um, I, I mean, this started to look like this months ago. And little at a time, little by little, it started to come out that, uh, you know, both both sides of this are, are involved in a little bit of hinkiness. You know, the, the women, a lot of the women involved seem to have been involved in uh, voluntary activity with them. A lot of the women involved seem to be uh, quite uh, uh, enthusiastic about their end of the quid pro quo agreement. Mm -hmm. And uh, while there are, you know, there is that one recording of, of the woman who turned him down and him saying, but I'm, what do you say? I'm used to this. This is the way I'm used to doing things. Yep. Well, here you go. This is why that was the way he was used to doing things. Because there are women who know that they can use their tits and ass to get a job. Now, if they can use their tits and ass to get a job more power to them but they have no business complaining later you can't, on you can't turn around and call it a rape 
right? Yeah. Yeah, you don't, don't get to turn around and call it a rape. Business. No. They don't have any business complaining that they had to use their tits and ass to get a job. You know, not every woman, not every woman can do that. Um, in fact, most women can't. And so if you can and you do, you have a leg up or tits and ass up on the other women. That's not something to bitch about, you know, flat out. And I, I know feminists would call that rape apology. But as far as I'm concerned, screw those guys. Uh, and they have no business complaining either. Because if they were in that position, they would do it too. Almost every single one of them, guaranteed. And some of the women that have done this are feminists. Oh, yeah. Now, it's Hollywood the women. The other end of it, other end of it is, uh, here you have, you know, this environment that's created. And you have a woman who doesn't want to participate in that game or can't. And all of a sudden, then it becomes something dark and ugly. She's cut out. She gets abused. You know, she gets hurt. Um, and that is both on the person who hurt her and the women who participated in the game. You know, you encourage this kind of thing. And you're eventually going to encourage someone with serious boundary issues. And this is a situation where it's still, you know, Weinstein, he may be completely innocent in, in most of the cases that, that he's involved in. The one thing I will be surprised at is if that tape um, in which he said, I'm used to, used to doing this, you know, I'm accustomed to this, if that accuser turns out to also not be a victim in some way or another. Um, but I think it's it's going to be kind of hard to explain that one away. So in this instance, like I said, there there's bad on both sides there. But I have a feeling that most of the cases against him are probably going to go this way. Yeah, I, I think so too. Uh, it's I mean, obviously, this is all speculation, but... When I heard about this, it was like one of the first things that we talked about. I'm pretty sure I, I said this. I said that if this is casting couch stuff that we are calling uh, rape, then that's wrong because I mean these these like as as regardless of as to how you feel about Harvey Weinstein, about how you feel, uh, you know, regardless of what you might think about the way in which he has made women famous. By essentially saying, you know what, um, you want to be famous, then, you know, get naked on the couch. I don't know. Let me jizz in a plant. Whatever it is, right? If they consent to that, then there's no rape. That's all there is to it. I mean, you could, like, you could say it's gross and all this other shit, but it's not illegal. And for them to wait for as long as they did and then come forward and then make accusations, and then this one falls apart, I think it calls all the other ones into question. And there's a pretty good chance that he's going to get away with all of it. But, I want to make this, this is a big but. Um, Bill Cosby was found guilty. And he's serving time. And as far as I'm concerned, considering how long it had been and, and what little they have as far as evidence goes, uh, I think that he was unjustly imprisoned. Because, I'm, again, I think this was a case of people consenting to, you know, hang around with him. He like there. I think the one the big contention was uh, he was asked if he had given these women drugs, and he said yes, he did. But the 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 um, and I know that we're not we're not specifically talking about the Bill Cosby case, but it's it's worth repeating. Um, the thing that's left out is did they want to do drugs with him? And I think that's actually what it was. He said, "Hey, I got quaaludes. You want to come into my trailer?" And they were like, "Yes, I do." And then they do drugs together and have sex. So. He's going to jail for something that wasn't a rape, if that's true, right? Unless there's something else I don't know. So just because Harvey Weinstein, um, the case against him could be falling apart, doesn't mean that this is necessarily a victory. Again, I, I don't have an opinion on the man himself. I'm looking at the case. And what we, what we don't want is to live in a world where a woman can wait as long as she wants and then come forward and make an accusation even though she was complicit and still put a person in jail. And that's why a part of me is actually happy to see that he's turning out to be innocent in these cases because I think that it will um, – it's a lesson, right? If someone – if you don't want to be on the casting couch, then don't. 
But if you do, you don't get to turn around and try to accuse somebody of anything, right? And if you and if something happens to you, you don't wait 10, 15, 20 years to speak up. You do it immediately. You know, regardless of as to how powerful you think they are. I don't think that that you know that that is even a thing. So that's what I believe. Um, well, what we're seeing here is it's not power that is getting uh, men acquitted in cases like this. It's evidence. Yeah. It's evidence, exactly, or or lack thereof right. on, the other, on the other side. So, right. Well, in this case, there, there's specific evidence. This is mm -hmm. an email where she's talked about how much she loves him and she hates just being called. I mean, this makes it sound like she just resents not being important to him. Um, that's yeah. evidence. Yeah, it's not sure. even... Not even lack of evidence. It's evidence. There could be a complete lack of evidence, and they could still get him convicted. Oh yeah, for sure. He had a, you know, that's one of the documentation guys. Documentation is key to everything. Mm -hmm. you, you, I mean, when you, if you do uh, date, it, like I know there's a lot of MGTOW that listen to our show, but if you do date, communication is key. You know, you, you now you can't be the guy that, that doesn't call for three days or whatever um, that, that, that women apparently get pissed off about. I, I'm not sure what the big deal about that is, but in any case, you know, now it's now it's got to be uh, consistent communication before and after. And, and those communications, you got to keep those because that's going to be the thing that saves your ass if you ever have to go to court and defend your date, defend your night in bed, uh, because anything else any lack of evidence um any any uh history between the two of you none of that counts all you have is those communications yep uh i got a couple super chats i thought i would read out we got a kind of got a, lot, a building. lot of super chats. yeah i got a lot building up so uh frank tomato gives us two dollars canadian says fucking progressives uh, Feel the Bears gives us five dollars and says Kotaku NPC meme is dehumanizing. Also Kotaku, everyone who disagrees with us is a Russian bot. French Honey Badger gives us five dollars and says yes, the opioid the opioid crisis is entirely the government's fault. Albert Nada gives us five dollars Canadian and says Patriarchy Pictures presents a gratuitous nudity production and Albert Nada film hot naked chicks from space who hate feminists. Make it happen. Uzi Patrol gives us $10 and says, I work in medical. It all started when patient advocate groups and their lawyers called pain the fifth vital sign. This is in response to what Hannah was talking about. Andrew Gauss gives us $10 and says, Sounds like what was happening in the UK with all of those cases falling apart. I wonder how many other cases in the US have evidence hidden from defendants. Yeah, because that, that detective, he was concealing, he was hiding evidence. Which is uh is super suspect, right? And he's considered um, by the by people in the Me Too movement to be a hero. And I have a little uh, an article with a blurb on that that I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys in a second. So this guy who is basically doing shit, you know that I guess if you're hiding evidence, I don't know if that's illegal, but it certainly is improper. Uh, he's being hailed as a Me Too hero because I guess he get he can get convictions. Uh, Frank Tomeo gives us $5 Canadian, says Michael Keller says something important about a memory wall. Hold on, I'll get that. Uh, Michael Keller says Badger live streams. We need a virtual memory wall for those who got falsely me too and or committed suicide after being accused. Yeah. I think Frank's point is uh, we already do have one of those. I'd like to know where that is. Hmm. And uh, thanks for that, Frank and Michael Keller. Mr. Roboto gives us $2 and says... Where are all the where all the Me Too people when it was Roman Polanski? Yeah, well, that wasn't a thing at the time, uh, but they were supporting him. Yeah, despite the age of his his victim. Yeah, they were. They were like they were giving him standing ovations. That's what they were doing. Frank Tomeo gives exactly. us Frank Tomeo gives us two dollars Canadian and says, "Remember documentation." Uh, neat scholar gives us ten dollars Canadian and says, "Does anyone know a good trick to remove a semen off of a chair, uh, a semen stain off a chair?" I'm asking for a friend. Dawn dish detergent <laughs> and cold. Hey, it gets water. it out of the cold <laughs> Never water. Never mind. Yeah, and cold water. Always mm -hmm. use cold water on uh, on bodily fluids of all kinds. And uh, Dawn dish detergent for for bodily fluids that are not blood and peroxide for for blood. 
And mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to explain how I know any of that other than the fact that I, I do clean house occasionally. If you uh, saw my house, you would not believe that at all, but it is true. <laughs> also, if you have Sasha Gray handy, I'm sure that she'd be willing uh, to help you out with that. Tyler Preston gives us $2 and says, you guys saw the pilot of the Charmed reboot? No, I, I know I know about it, but no thanks. But we will be talking about witches. <laughs> Joseph Kasky gives us $20. Thanks, Joseph. And says, Hannah, I was once a resident of your neck of the woods. Jumped Ohio ship to Colorado. Also, due process. Glad I'm gay and I don't have to wade the messy waters most men face with dating these days. Ah, Joseph. <laughs> how how naive. Who, uh, there, there, were, there have been a couple of women actually now who have been convicted of false accusations after choosing men at random off of Facebook mm -hmm. to accuse them you of could, rape. You could still There's be accused. There's been two news stories about that. Um, that's the other thing. Now, I'm, I've been to Colorado, and Colorado is beautiful. Uh, went to Colorado Springs, and uh, oh, where else did I go? Colorado Zoo, uh, I believe, or maybe it was a Den Denver Zoo. But uh, it's been like 20 years, but Colorado is really nice. Yeah. Uh, also, yeah, so Mike, I'm sorry, Dr. Random Cam, you, you were commenting about the something? No, I, I was just laughing at the idea that anyone is safe. Even <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, if a woman levels an accusation all together now, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I I'm sorry, uh, Joseph. You're not safe. I want to point one other thing out. There are two very significant differences between Harvey Weinstein and Bill Cosby. Uh, one of them is, is blatantly obvious. One's white and one's black. Uh, so that that's sort of consistent with what we've seen in the justice system. Uh, the other one is uh, Harvey Weinstein is uh, a progressive, and he's he's buddies. He rubbed shoulders with lots and lots of progressives, lots of politicians who were not progressive, also. But he was he's a he's a big progressive supporter, right? Uh, Bill Cosby was a conservative. Yeah, so he's right, not. So, so that means he's not actually black. He is Uncle yeah. Tom. Which, uh, you know, I don't know if he was a conservative all of his life and he was a hypocrite about the partying and everything, or if he learned some hard lessons from the partying and became a conservative. Uh, but well, I think he is in so far as he, he is in so far as he believes in the importance of family and community. Yeah. And so he had a focus on fathers. And I know that we, we had talked about this already, but I think that was the main thing with Cosby was he was very concerned with keeping the black family unit together and he was very vocal mm -hmm. about it. And that was a thing. I'm not saying that's why, but I mean, that was the, that's really the thing that separates him from Weinstein. I don't know of that, Weinstein that really had done was. anything in terms of like advocacy for that, you know. But uh, you've seen how they went after Kanye West. Uh, you know, black men are not allowed to be conservatives without having the the entire uh, progressive end of the left come down on their heads mm -hmm. and attack them one way or another. If they can call you crazy, they call you crazy. If they can't call you crazy, they call you a rapist. If they can't call you a rapist, they will come up with something else. You can guarantee it. Um, yep. And that's, I think that's a lot of what's going on in the, that case. And I wonder, um, you know, what, uh, what Weinstein did to get him put into the situation, who he didn't support. Or, uh, you know, who he didn't give money to. Uh, I'm, I'm really cynical about this because you're know, looking at the accusations and everything, how they're falling apart and everything. Um, I really suspect that it's political as much as anything else. Not just political as in the Me Too movement, but personally political against him. Uh, and with the Bill, Co Bill Cosby thing, if I remember right from what I read, it was it wasn't... Uh, that he admitted to consensual use of hard drugs, but that he admitted to sharing things like Benadryl and stuff like that, and they assumed that he was lying and decided that it was hard drugs. Yeah. The other thing is there's this, uh, there's apparently a phone call in question that was recorded, and uh, according to his wife, it was doctored Camille. before being presented in court, uh, and... They want the undoctored version, and they're trying to get the undoctored version. She's had an expert say this was doctored. There, the the uh, things that he's alleged to have said have been 
there's things he said in between that have been erased that provide context that completely change the meaning of them. Yeah. So it, it's entirely possible that the Cosby case could fall apart. The thing that makes me really sad well, about it is if he, it does, he, it know, won't be until after like because he's already serving his sentence right now. He's isn't serving he? time. You know, yeah. you put somebody that age in jail, that is that is an incredibly traumatic experience to begin mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. for anybody that it happens to. When you put an older person through a traumatic experience, he's gonna have to be tough as nails to come out of this alive. Yeah. And I, I'm rooting for him to come out of this alive and to get to to, to get to a conclusion where we know the truth and we, we know it solidly enough that there is no question anymore. Um, yeah. And I, I hope that happens while he's still alive. It's also important... Oh, go ahead, Mike. I'm go surprised ahead. No, one's, no one's pulled the Jew card regarding Harvey Weinstein. No one's pulled the Jew card regarding Roseanne Barr, except Roseanne herself. Mm -hmm. It's much like the yeah. black thing. You don't count as Jewish if you're conservative yeah or if you're not uh, like on as far left as they are even if you're like a centrist or something um the the one thing i want to say with regards to weinstein and cosby is that you know i, I think it's important that i i keep bringing this up with the, the fact that i'm willing to uh stand by evidence you know if it comes out that weinstein is innocent or at least you know not guilty of rape uh, and and that Cosby is uh, innocent in my mind, um, and that he's basically been unjustly imprisoned um, unless there's evidence that changes that. And I have to keep bringing it up because the thing is, in both of these cases, okay, despite the fact that Weinstein and Cosby are di they differ politically, in, as as Hannah had pointed out, um, they're both men, and that's actually more important than where their politics is because people on the left and the right largely believe that they're guilty both of them right so if and that's because it's easy to it's not just because it's politically um expedient i think it's actually got more to do with you know if it looks bad but there's not enough ev like if, there, if it looks bad to people like the optics aren't good but the evidence isn't quite solid enough they will go ahead and side with that guy's probably a serial rapist and a lot of them do and they just it's it's like it's the mainstream women worsting you know narrative that's the that is the gravy train that everybody gets on and um i'm gonna push back against it as often as possible because it's just like i don't see the evidence for it and that means I'm going to have the most unpopular opinion. And I don't know if any of the other Badgers here would agree with me, but that's where I'm going to sit on it. And I'm going to bring it up as often as possible because if Weinstein turns out to be innocent, I'm going to defend him, even though I don't like him, right? It's because he that that's a precedent-setting thing that has to be pointed out. The same thing goes for Bill Cosby. If it comes out later that he wasn't supposed to be in jail then I want to be the guy who has basically said all this time I knew that that guy was innocent, right? And we have to keep that in mind because the Emmett Till thing we didn't get like we didn't learn that was a false accusation until like what, uh, like uh, earlier this year. So <laughs> this this is why yeah, you know this we got confirmation. Yeah, and I mean like and I I think that this thing is uh it's definitely bigger than race in my opinion it's because they're men that comes first you can't create a threat narrative around a race if you don't use the men in that race to do it and so when people say you're a white male or you know those those darkies over there are scary they're talking about their men and that's the thing that um i'm gonna like keep a focus on so just know that uh i'm I i'm gonna follow this Harvey Weinstein thing through because I want to see what happens. I think that it is likely that m many of these cases will fall apart and that they were in fact consensual and that he is unfairly being prosecuted, even though I don't like him. But uh, you know what? The law is a law and he is still a man at the end of the day. And I don't want to see precedent get set that could hurt, you know, good men too. So this is why I, um, I'm, I'm doing this. This is why I feel Nor do this we, way. Do we want to see this turned into a hate crime, by the way, because this became news today, at least over here, yeah. considering turning misery yeah. into a hate crime as well. No, mm -hmm. thank you. Do not want wrong direction. Thank yeah. you very yeah. much. Yeah, I feel the same way. Plus, I think that even if they do it, Mike, I, I believe that it's going to, because we're talking about trying to find hate crimes, 
I have a feeling that even if they make misandry a hate crime, there will be One significantly game. fewer instances of misandry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Regardless. Yeah, you know, it's like lip service. It means nothing. They're turning the world nothing. into a kindergarten. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. They're turning the whole world into a kindergarten. I'm, I, I got to say it. Um, if you listen to any politician, anyone who um, is it like a political advocate, a commentator, anything like that, the, the minute they start making noises about you, know, the general public isn't smart enough to deal with their own shit. The general public can't take care of themselves. The general public can't determine their own interactions with other people. Um, and it doesn't matter if there's a victim. It doesn't matter if someone is ignoring where their rights end and your nose begins. If you are annoyed by them, we have to take care of that. The minute they start saying, uh, these people are our burden and it's our job to make all their decisions for them. The, mo the minute they start saying these people are our burden and it's our job to provide, they're not your friend. They're not helping you. They're not there to make your life better. They are there to take control over you as much as humanly possible in order to keep you from fighting back against getting farmed. Mm -hmm. That is the underlying goal, is farming you. Farming you for wealth. And everything else they do, this idea of making uh, uh, disenfranchisement from the opposite sex, regardless of which sex you are, this idea of, of making interpersonal conflict a crime, even if it doesn't explode into violence or harassment or anything like that, that is all about creating new ways for, for for the government to create jobs for people to do they have to tax people for to, to manage people that is it that's all they care about they don't care how you uh, deal with this stuff they don't care whether you're actually wounded by this or not they don't even care if you're content they don't care if you eat all they care about is how can we create new ways to make money off the public and that's mm -hmm. all this is mm-hmm uh, Super Chats. Mr. Roboto gives us $2 and says, Weinstein is a progressive. Funny it's not mentioned. Well, we, yeah, we yeah, did talk is. about it, though. We did mention it. Oh, oh, it but. is mentioned. Uh, he's been a big Democrat donor, as big as an individual, uh, you know, is allowed to be in a lot of cases, um, for years, since, since the early 90s. Mm -hmm. And he's been known as a big Democrat donor, and he's been photographed with a lot of Democrat politicians because he donated to them. Oh, yeah. Michelle Obama honored him, and it goes on and on. Hillary Clinton. Hillary uh, Clinton, you know, yeah. Just, it goes back. Um, Pelosi, Schumer, he's, uh, he's, he's given money to a lot of people. He's close and to all those people. He's, he's, a, he's a feminist, self-identified. and there to the yeah, yeah. Democratic National Committee. It's, yeah, he's, he is. He's a big Democrat. But uh, you, know, you know the primary reason that they're vulnerable. To all, I agree with Brian. Uh, the primary reason that these guys are vulnerable is because they're men. Uh, the primary reason that they're targeted is because they're men. But I do believe that uh, there's a difference in in the treatment that the two men are going to receive. That is partly based on on skin color, and uh, that is partly based on their politics. Yeah. I think that Weinstein may receive. A little more fair treatment uh, than Cosby will receive for those two reasons, even though he would not receive as much uh, as, as fair treatment as a woman in his situation. Uh, if a woman got into his situation, would be which would be a rare thing, uh, a woman would be treated much more fairly in that situation than even mm -hmm. Weinstein will. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Cyberzerk gives us 50 sex and says, At Dr. Radamarkam, Benny Fredrickson, director of a Swedish theater, committed suicide after accusations of, quote, having enabled sexual harassment. Enabled sexual yeah, harassment. Yeah, I'm looking that up now. I, I didn't know that was a thing. I mean, that could include anything. Like, you gave birth to a rapist, so... <laughs> but how far is this going to go? Oh, I, my God. You shared... I'm looking at you, now, I don't think this guy even was accused of sexual harassment. But like maybe he just owned a theater, which occasionally played films that were misogynistic. I don't know. <laughs> Problematic movies incorporated. Carry on, guys. Okay, all right. We'll, we'll go on to, if anybody has any final thoughts on the Weinstein thing. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, yeah, there was something I, I wanted to mention. This is 
this uh, NYPD hero. So there's this article on the Daily Beast uh, that came out last year honoring the same detective that was found to have um, he was the guy involved with these Weinstein things. So the, the the opinion piece here essentially speculates that if this detective, uh, Nicholas DeGuardio, DeGuardio, who is the dude that was caught in in this case that that fell apart, he is the detective that was caught withholding evidence that would that that essentially shows that this woman who was accusing him of uh, of rape or sexual assault, whatever you want to call it was actually consenting this guy was withholding it this detective with in an effort to essentially get make sure that weinstein got convicted and just a year ago in november so almost a year you know exactly uh was being he was being honored by the daily beast for being a hero um to this sort of like i guess it was before it was the me too movement for the another case that he was involved with that also involved Harvey Weinstein with uh, a woman I don't remember her name but the oh yeah uh, Paz de la Huerta now this one didn't go through either so that's why we never I don't know if you guys remember this story because I don't it didn't actually you know go through it didn't work out because there wasn't enough evidence but this is the same detective involved in another case and i find it i find it very interesting and um so you know the, the rabbit hole might be a little bit deeper and that's why uh lindsay who wrote the article she said um this could be big but we'd have to wait until more is revealed uh and maybe look into this uh nicholas de Gaudio person so but uh, anyway, I don't know if there's any... Sorry, my dogs. My dogs are barking. Um, I don't know if there's anything... Oh, Frank Tomato gives another $2 Canadian. says, healthcare and insurance are huge U.S. problems. Okay, well, thank you for that. Um, yeah, so if there's nothing else, I guess I'll move on to the next story. Well, uh, the one thing I will say is that that... that that last bit that you mentioned prior to the super chat is is really key because that mm -hmm. is a common problem for defendants in cases where uh, accusations of sexual assault have been made uh, is that the uh, the prosecutors the detectives the the officers the investigating officers all try to hide exculpatory evidence and this is one of the reasons why so many of the men in the uh, um Innocence projects on the Innocence Projects list of acquitted men are acquitted of things like rape. Uh, you know, like there's also acquitted people who have been acquitted of murder and things like that. But uh, there's there's several instances where ex exculpatory evidence has been withheld in cases, and then later on they are they are overturned because you know you you cannot just withhold exculpatory evidence like that. But mm -hmm. it gets done to sexual uh, assault accused all the time. Yeah, it's that. It's that. Uh, well, I don't know. It's like it's that whole. I guess what is it? You know, if if uh, if you could put away nine uh, innocent men to make sure that one guilty one goes to jail. You know, there are some people yeah. who believe yeah. that that that's what that. That's and the really dumb doing. thing is, it doesn't. It doesn't make sure a guilty man goes to jail. In fact. Putting away innocent men can actually keep guilty men out of jail. Mm -hmm. uh, the the FBI uh, research showed that the one that had that showed that one in uh, what was it one in four of the the cases where they did DNA testing showed they had at the very least the wrong guy, if if not you know some false accusers in that list. Uh, that's that's a problem. Um, trauma does strange things to you. And and it can help or can 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 help you remember things, and it can also cause you to have difficulty identifying your uh, your your perpetrator. Um, and in in situations like that, you name the wrong person. It's not necessarily because you're malicious, but you still name the wrong person, and the person that that didn't do it that got named doesn't deserve to be punished. And if they do punish the wrong guy and the right guy gets away with it, he may go on to do it to somebody else. So, yeah, this is a really serious issue. 
Absolutely. Okay. Uh, well, if there's nothing else, we're going to move on. Let me just make sure there's no super chats that popped up. Nope. Okay. Well, let's. Uh, this 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 should be fun. Tell also tell us what you guys think about these stories. Obviously, in the comment section, I look forward to seeing your comments, especially this Harvey Weinstein thing. I think it's very interesting. So, but now we're going to talk about Kavanaugh and witches. <laughs> Brooklyn witches plan to cast curse on Justice Kavanaugh. <laughs> Some witches based out of Brooklyn, because that's uh, apparently where they come from, are planning on casting a hex on Brett Kavanaugh, the newest United States Supreme Court justice. The Catland occult store in Bushwick is planning on casting a hex on Kavanaugh, as well as, quote, all rapists and, quote, the patriarchy on October 20th. So, you know, uh, mark your calendars and, and get your wolf's bane or whatever it is that you need to resist curses. Um, over 1,000 people said that they will attend according to a Facebook event page. Can you believe it? Can you imagine being one of those people? The page says that, quote, he will be the focal point, but by no means the only target. So bring your rage and all of the axes you've got to grind, end quote. Dakota, Dakota... Barca Barkiali, that's the name of the woman, uh, is the organizer of the event, which is similar to other hexing events held when Donald Trump was elected president. That, that worked out really well, too, I'm sure. Uh, Barkiali says that the hex is for, quote, even if you don't believe in the magic of it, you're given the space and the affirmation, having your voice heard, feeling a sense of fellowship and camaraderie. We're putting out the message that you're not alone. We're not leaving you alone with the monsters. By the way, tickets are ten dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Plot twist of the century. <laughs> with half. I've been sitting here but, muted and giggling. Uh, <laughs> but but with <laughs> tickets are ten dollars. With half of the proceeds planned to go towards LGBT causes and reproductive rights. <laughs> If you say publicly, oh, I, I hope some journalists get guns down this weekend, that's really bad. And you'll get crucified and dropped from everyone, whoever, 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 whatever. But if you actually organize an event where you don't just hope that people get murdered or gunned down, but you actually try to create black magic to, to make it happen. And even, even if there are a lot among you who don't believe in the black magic, they just hope someone gets murdered or, or gunned down or something. That's fine, as, as long as, I don't know as long as what. I think, again, it's just the right people and the wrong people. Uh, I, I mean, they're yeah. actually wishing death on someone, en masse, right? Well, it, you know, it doesn't say, does it? Is that what it's, it just says I they're casting know. a hex. They don't know. So, uh, this is funny. I'm sorry. Because, <laughs> you know, the hex on Trump, it works so well it works that, so that, that okay. we, now we have pe <laughs> like, like negotiating peace with North Korea and, uh, you know, uh, like the economy is doing well. And, uh, and Kanye came to the White House. Maybe that's the, the that's the maybe that's where it culminates. I don't know. It's we'll have to see. But go ahead. Oh, Hannah. Christ. OK, so uh, I, I, I can just speak from the perspective of somebody who has been Wiccan and and part of an eclectic coven. Actually, I've been part of three different eclectic covens. Um, so and, and, and I was a high priestess of one. So uh, there you go. Um, but in any case, <laughs> none of the people I'm sorry, I can't stop laughing. about this, this is so <laughs> fake. None of the people it's I've okay. ever been involved with would do something like this because it goes against their religious beliefs. Uh, the idea that you would you would direct energy at somebody, and that's what what they would consider this. You're directing energy at people. This is energy work, right? Um, that they would that they would do something like this. So so if these are Wiccans, they're actually uh, violating their own faith. Um, kind of like if you were uh, a Baptist and you started praying for somebody to die, uh, even if <clears throat> they don't pray for anything. You know, they don't direct energy for anything bad to happen to these guys. Um, they're they're doing this without their consent, and uh, they're not under attack, so they're not defending themselves against an attack. Uh, now, the the patriarchy, that's the, the funniest part. They're casting spells on the patriarchy. The patriarchy is an idea, a concept. Um, so, that, like, what exactly are they targeting when they target the patriarchy? Uh, but but in any case, this is this is definitely not something that 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 particular group of witches 
would approve. Uh, it would be normal for them to do energy work to boost themselves, to bring, you know, uh, positivity and comfort to people who are on their side of the political fence and blah, blah, blah. But I don't know where this shit is coming from other than maybe somebody with mental illness or somebody that practices a different type of witchcraft. Because that's, uh, that is, and of course there are Wiccans who also think that they are the only people who should be allowed to call themselves witches. So if these are, these are witches that are not Wiccans, that's going to cause a rift as well. Uh, but that just, that blows my mind. Um, that, that there are people that are actually coming out and saying this on the news too. Because that's going to just scare the shit out of Kavanaugh, right? He's going to be like, oh, these people I don't believe in are casting spells on me. Um, if the guy is as religious as he seems to be, uh, he's not going to be feel the least bit threatened by this. Because all he has to do is pray it away and it'll be gone in his, in his belief system. So the conflict f between these two belief systems is... Uh, there, there's this group of people that, from what I understand, it's consistent throughout uh, several different traditions of witchcraft that if you try to do stuff like this to somebody that doesn't believe you can, it has no effect. Um, so they're, they're, they're both the conflict between these two belief systems is the, that their target has no, uh, no belief at all that they're going to be able to affect him. And he's not actually gonna gonna suffer anything because of this. So it's completely useless. It's a political statement. Um, it might make them all feel great, but aside from that, it makes them look like look like idiots. Uh, it makes them look like hypocrites, and it also uh, ends up being a money grubbing thing because they're charging to attend, which uh, is one of the uh, pagan complaints about christian churches so <laughs> it's good times guys i'm so just remember, i'm gonna die uh, laughing at this remember don't say i hope you die in a fire because <laughs> that's a death threat you got to make sure you say i hope hecate and beelzebub burn you in a fire <laughs> 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 just go out and you know get yourself some candles and and light it up and you know say some things and you'll feel better and and tell everybody else you did it, and then maybe you'll scare a few people. I, I, I think I think <laughs> I, I think witchcraft might might have been the first thing feminists killed. I, I <laughs> before they even got into pop culture, the first thing they ruined was that. And I, I don't know, giving Wait. giving women the vote was a mistake. <laughs> Can we have chattel back, please? Can let's bring the chattel back. <sighs> these religions, a lot of these religions, evolved out of. That, that existed before uh, Europe was Christian. And then mm -hmm. it, was, it was about uh, being close to nature and, and understanding as they were able to understand at the time. And I mean, all religions kind of evolved out of wanting to understand the world you live in and why things happen uh, from, a, from a different perspective than science because you know, it took some time for science to evolve, the sounds, understanding of science to evolve. So sounds like heresy. Not, <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not uh, down on the idea of these different religions that people people came up with this stuff to help un themselves understand things that's not bad and it's not bad to want to be close to nature and and, and enjoy uh, the seasons even if the seasons make you cough and sneeze like they do to me uh, seasons happen to try to kill me twice a year but you know it's not bad to enjoy um, the good things in nature it's not bad to enjoy uh, the fact that your food all comes from nature and, and deal with the cycles and, and, and keep track of that stuff and celebrate it and all that it's just really dysfunctional to walk away from that aspect of the religious beliefs to do shit like this. Mm -hmm. Isn't it ironic that witches are actually engaging in a witch hunt <laughs> against Brett Kavanaugh? It is, it is perfect. <laughs> it is just too perfect. And the fact that this is the, well, the bookstore is named Catland. <laughs> yeah exactly that's it's, not surprising either. oh my god what were you thinking what, what a perfect story for october that's all i'm saying <sighs> okay anyway get that witch a cauldron witches love cauldrons uh let us move on <laughs> to the next let's move on to the next story so don't you hate it when you accidentally trip while holding a knife and stab someone to death florida woman does too <laughs> 
from ABC. Florida woman charged with killing her husband told investigators she accidentally stabbed him after tripping on a rug. Rachel... Well, presumably her husband is Florida man, so he deserved yes. everything. Oh, well, <laughs> yes. Yep. Um, uh, Rachel Fedanian has been charged with second-degree murder of her 40-year-old husband, Bryant Fedanian. The 38-year-old suspect told Polk County Sheriff's investigators she was cutting pizza with a knife when the couple's dog came into the house covered in feces. Sounds like a really classy household. She, she said she ran towards the dog, tripped on a rug, and fell into her husband, stabbing him in the chest. While she described her relationship as wonderful, detectives say neighbors reported frequent arguments and deputies had been called seven times to the home. Fidadian was being held without bond on Friday. Also, um, just before anybody else says it, bitches be tripping. That's the <laughs> I just wanted to say that. Bitches yeah. always be tripping, y'all. It was all the shitty dog's <laughs> fault. Yeah. I, I just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, press X to doubt, everybody. Um, th this was an accident. Uh, th this is, uh, the, the, you know... I just thought it was a funny story. Flo Florida, man, what the fuck is is there something in the water? Uh, you know, like. <laughs> yes, yes, actually, algae, algae is yeah. in the water, and it's very, it's a very big problem. Um, that and there actually is there is, and there's something else in the water too in Florida, alligators. Um. Yeah. Oh, no, they're not yeah. always in the water. No, no. Sometimes they're in your backyard. Sometimes they walk really down the good. street. Yeah. Uh, actually, my my uncle's down in Florida has has uh, netting, some so sort of netting all around his backyard, um, to keep alligators out. Like you actually have to take anti alligator measures in certain areas of Florida to to keep alligators out of your yard. Uh, You've got pythons there now as well. They introduced yep. pythons, and now they're now they're overrunning the place and killing everything. Mm, Good probably going, somebody's people. pet getting away. So yeah, that's uh, Florida has some like it's the Australia of America. <laughs> it's, just, it's the closest we've got. They have bl brown recluse spiders and black widows and uh, great big nasty things that can eat your pets and your children. They I think they even still have like uh, some big cats, not little cats, but actual like cougars and stuff like that. So there's there's uh, there's all kinds of fun things in Florida, uh, but. And apparently there are women who uh, who can't go th walking through the living room without falling on their husbands and stabbing them in the chest. Damn, but, dude. Uh, you know, I, I just it just sank in that she's 38. The, the bitch looks like Dolph Lundgren. I mean, damn. I know. <laughs> she, she looks like she's my age. Um, but she looks way older than you, Hannah. Way old. You look short. like a teenager well, compared to her. I'm serious. No. Oh, you're sweetheart. This, this woman's life was rough. <laughs> if her story is as b bizarre as it is, it's it's what she has described as possible. If it's true, uh, then there should be footprints on the floor from the dog. So the, te the mm -hmm. detective should have at least found some evidence that, that the dog actually did come into the house covered in shit. Uh, like, if that happened, it's possible that her story is true. It's too bad her husband's not around to defend her. <laughs> no, meth's a hell of a drug. <laughs> I know. Somebody said you could light a match on that face. <laughs> Michael Keller, no, Brian didn't call me old. I but know. I am 46 and proud of it. Because, I'm, I'm 46 you know, I too. The doctor say I wasn't going to live to be 21. So, you know, neener, neener, doctor. <laughs> not, not ours, obviously. <laughs> oh, anyway. So it's nice. It's it's it was a, a good good try. Tripping and falling into your husband with a knife is a it's a good try. You should get one of those rolly things for pizzas though. They they work a lot better than knives. That's kind of a pain in the ass. And also, why was your dog covered in shit? What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> it was Florida dog. <laughs> yeah, Florida right. dog. Probably rolled in it. Okay, uh, I got some super chats. Uh, let's see. Um, Maul Lurk gives us 20 kronas. I, I know that now. Donkey Kong coins says, did it to Trump too. Now he can't stop winning. This is regards to the witchcraft, the spells. Um, French Honey Badger gives us $5 and says, so that witch stuff is still about collective masturbation. 
And then uh, and Kapistan gives us another five dollars and says Florida police records are public, so journalists just sit at police stations to pick up stories as they come out. Hence all of the stories, and they're so great. Don't ever change Florida. Joshua Toms gives us two dollars and says, "Why live in the middle of nowhere in Florida?" I don't know. Um, I mean, cheap real estate. Yeah, it must be free real estate. Well, the thing you have to understand is every state has something like Florida, man. It's just depending on, you know, the, the character of the state, things might be different. Florida man tries to eat your face. Ohio man will assault you with a pizza. So, you know, mm-hmm. and, and you can look that up. That is, that's actually a news story from Ohio. Somebody <laughs> assaulted somebody else with a pizza. They hit them in the face with a pizza. Uh, so, yeah, there's, there's every, every state has their, their Florida man, their, their state man, and their state woman. You just have to. You just have to look for it. According to French Honey Badger, who gives us five dollars to say this, Florida police records are public, so journalists just sit at police stations to pick up stories as they come out, hence all the stories. That kind of makes sense. Mm-hmm. But also, it's tropical. Tropical climates just drive people nuts in general. <laughs> yeah, and that where all I the think. all the bath salts zombie attacks were happening a few like uh, many years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was yeah. all fabricated. It was all bad. Yeah, oh, okay, all right. I mean, Florida I just figured it's Florida. Florida. The weather it, is great. When the zombie Florida apocalypse great. breaks out, it's going to happen. It's going to start in Florida. That's going to be ground zero. Just, just saying. Yeah. It's either I there just, or I California. Just I just want to say, though, the, the disparaging Florida weather is not nice. Florida weather is fabulous in January. Mm-hmm. And February. Oh, I'm sure it is. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, great place to, you know, to, to be in uh, during those times. Much better to be there than in Ohio in those months. Just saying. Also, California could also... They already have zombies, but they're different kinds of zombies. California uh, has earthquakes, though. Yeah. And, and zombies. Or NPCs. Aren't they? Yeah, but the earthquakes will knock the zombies down. <laughs> then you can run away. Oh, the zombies don't do anything. They just kind of hang around and shit in the streets. But they still have them. <laughs> they're not the kind that you have to be afraid of. They usually stay there. Um, but... Anyway, uh, okay, so that is, uh, that's it for Florida Woman. I just thought, funny story, I'll share. I think there's another super chat before I go on. Uh, Frank Tomeo gives us Calif- uh, $2 Canadian. I'm sorry, I almost said California. I am sorry about that. Very sorry. Uh, $2 Canadian and says Florida is crazy. Okay. We don't have um, our own currency in California. But there's a Disneyland. Yeah, Disneyland is there. I forget, Disneyland or Disney World. It's a Disney thing there. Disney dollars, yeah. We're going to switch to them eventually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, they're probably worth more than... No, I don't know. Just going right. to buy the whole state sometime. <laughs> Just buy the state. One can, one can. Okay. So moving on to the last story. Uh, him too. Hashtag him too picks up attention. Hashtag him too is a hashtag that gained some attention these past few weeks. Because of of the ordeal that Brett Kavanaugh had to endure. While the hashtag has been used sparingly, it went viral after a mother made a post comparing what her son was going through to Brett Kavanaugh. She said that her son was refusing to go on, quote, solo dates due to the current climate of false sexual accusations by radical feminists with an axe to grind, end quote. Solo, I'm sorry, man... People made, uh, many people made fun of her comment and various other posts mocking the hashtag spread over other social media platforms. Her son, Peter Hansen, tweeted that, quote, Sometimes the people we love do things that hurt us without realizing it. I respect and hashtag believe women. I don't know why. I never have and I never will support hashtag him too. So her own son doesn't agree with the hashtag. For some reason. This is not going to get you laid, buddy. Um, okay. President? I think, a, I think a lot of guys just do that because they think they have to. Not because they mm. want to get laid or not. Because they think it's they have to. Yeah. I think it's a requirement of being considered a good good man. Yeah, sure. No, I, I think that's just normal blue pill thinking for a lot of guys. I mean, uh, even like what, what Kavanaugh had like this speech after his... Um, I think his confirmation and he did, he also conceded a lot of feminist talking points and, you know, just was not red pilled at all by his experience. 
And I wasn't surprised by that in the least. People were shocked and they were like, oh my God, I can't believe it. And I was like, yeah, that's he's still a blue pill dude. He's still going to, you know, if he had done the opposite, I'd have been surprised and impressed, you know. But as I guess as long as they stay the course on due process, I'll take it for now. But yeah, this is not going to red pill that many people, this experience. President Trump has spoken about the concerns of some men regarding false rape accusations, saying that it's a very scary time for young men in America where you can be guilty of something that you may not be guilty of. Clara Wilkins, a social psychologist at Washington University in St. Louis, says that, quote, men perceive that if women gain, men lose, end quote, and that according to some research, Quote, men think they are experiencing bias now more than they ever have before. Andrew Miltenberg is an attorney who claims that he has defended hundreds of young men from false allegations, many of them in a university setting. I like how they write claims, but okay. Many of them in a university setting. He says that, quote, in most cases, not all, women are seeking revenge on ex-boyfriends or young men that they found have played around too much. It's very difficult for young men to get a fair opportunity to be heard. It's a very frightening time. I don't really believe you can be alone in a room with a young woman now in this climate. Uh, no, you can't. Yeah, no. Don't you know, when, 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 trust it. No, when you know that, yeah, that one word, you know, out, out, of, out of her can put you through a major ordeal that can last years and years you know or or one phrase i'm afraid that's all it takes uh you can walk into a uh a court right now if you're female you can walk into a court and get a temporary emergency restraining order against a guy simply because you are afraid of him all you have to do is say that you don't even have to prove it you don't even have to prove you have a reason to be afraid of him uh you can give reasons but you don't have to prove any of them are true. So it is a very scary time for guys. And feminist reaction to, uh, and, and a lot of the rest of the public as well, the reaction to that hashtag. When feminists tell you feminism is about equality, remind them that feminists took over a uh, sexual assault and false accusation awareness conversation, you know, a, a victim conversation basically, and, and made fun of men's response to social tolerance for false accusations by showing tolerance for false accusations. Um, they basically proved the point of the hashtag right there. And, and, and it's insane that they would expect people to look at that and not see it as evidence that feminism is not about equality. It's about demonizing men and damseling women for dollars. They're, they're threatened, and that's it. Um, the other thing that I would say about this, that line, men perceive that if women gain, men lose. Women don't gain from hashtag me too. Women don't gain from hashtag believe women. Women don't gain from being treated like nothing we do or say matters. Liars do. Liars gain from, from automatic belief. Liars gain from not having to present evidence. Liars gain from not having to be uh, treated as as if they are accountable when they lie. And there are liars who are women, but women who are not liars don't gain anything anything from this. Women who are not unscrupulous, women who are not man haters, women who are not uh, in any way willing to do exactly what I described, go into court and say, I'm scared, give me a, a restraining order. Uh, women who are not willing to disparage someone falsely to get what they want don't gain jack or shit from this. And some of them can get hurt from it because it can, it can happen to the men in their lives. Uh, and they can even be targeted by it personally. So the idea of, of uh, you know, women gaining from this, no, it's a particular class of women. Not, not all women are going to gain from this. And men are losing because they are having a human right stepped on. The due process isn't just a civil right. Being presumed innocent until proved guilty is not just a civil right. Your boundaries are being trespassed on. You are having things taken away from you if you can be just uh, jailed or, or have your career taken away or have your home and your family destroyed. 
on the basis of just somebody's word without any evidence. So yeah, men lose, uh, but but not to women. Men lose to liars under this situation. Also, um, once again, um, Mike Pence was doing the right thing. <laughs> so I, I I was trying to find this meme. It's a picture of him laughing, and it says "laughs in foresight," but I couldn't find it. But um, it's it's pretty it's pretty perfect. So yeah, apply the Pence rule if you must. Also, I, I mean, look, you know, the, it's absolutely true. This is a scary time to be a young man in America. I I still stand by that, and I'm really glad that Trump said it. I don't think that we would have. There's no way we would have heard that in most cases. So yeah, Pence has been vindicated. Trump makes a good point, and um, uh, guys, you know, it, look, I, I'm I'm still for the 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 MGTOW Congress. That's what I want to see one day. I don't think I'll see it in my lifetime, but maybe one day. So. Please keep doubling down, feminists. Keep making this harder and harder. Watch as more and more men go uh, go MGTOW. And then... But they're going to make MGTOW illegal too. You know, when, when they're vetting people for, for, the, for the Supreme Court, they're going to say, have you ever had sex with a woman? And have you, are you or have you ever been a MGTOW? If you answer mm. yes to either of these questions, get the fuck out. <laughs> because we all know MGTOW are a misogynist terrorist group. No, you know, you need to have to have had sex with at least 10 different thoughts before we'll consider you for, <laughs> for a place of, of responsibility. But it's no like devil's say, triangle. You can be alone in a, in, in a room with a woman as long as she's been, as long as you've vetted her very thoroughly. Just stay away from thoughts, gentlemen. Yes. Stay far, far away from the thoughts. <laughs> but if she breathes, Mike. <laughs> if she breathes... But, uh, okay, so, anyway, th well, anybody else have any other thoughts on this? Yeah, re regarding the uh, stay away from the thoughts, you know, and the, the whole di don't stick your dick in crazy uh, meme, too. I would just say, uh, vet women for character. You, could, you, get, you get demonized for that, but do it anyway. You have the right. And if you would not trust a man because of a particular type of behavior, don't trust a woman who exhibits that behavior. Um, if you if you wouldn't do business with a man engaging in that particular type of behavior, don't get romantically involved in a woman, you know, with a woman who would who would uh, engage in that type of behavior. I mean, like don't don't give women don't cut women slack on on accountability and on uh, due diligence in their lives just because they're women. You know, don't tolerate shit, shit that from a girl that you wouldn't tolerate from a guy. Uh, and that makes a big difference. Uh, if you let a woman walk all over you, you are more likely to be falsely accused. If you tolerate psychotic behavior, if you tolerate irresponsible behavior, if you tolerate dishonest behavior from a potential partner, you are more likely to be falsely accused. It doesn't mean that that's a fail-safe against ever being falsely accused, just like, you know, not going down dark alleys in the middle of the night half naked isn't a fail safe against ever being raped but it does make a difference in the level of risk that you face in your life so it's not just don't stick your dick in crazy uh don't don't you know jump into bed with the nearest woman um mm -hmm. don't trust that easily you have every right to judge and uh when people tell you that you don't you don't you're full of shit they're full of shit Yep. Uh, we got some super chats here. And I think we'll close it out. Uh, Frank Tomeo gives us $2 Canadian and says, Allison is super cool. Yeah, she's cool. Albert Nada gives us $5 Canadian and says, watching a kid clowning around in the subway station. What is it going to be like for him in 15 years? An internment camp? Well, I guess you look at the trajectory of, of uh, the, the, the absolute state of Canada, and uh, we'll, we'll have to see. I, I'm going to try to be a little optimistic and say maybe not, but shit, uh, you know, stay on patrol is all I can say. Redicus gives us $2 and says, Hannah, you said it wrong. Not women, but whammon. It's the whammons. Yep, the whammons. The whammon. And Frank Tomeo gives us $2 Canadian and says, don't stick your dick in crazy. 
or D78 K. D78 K. And crazy. There and, we go. Uh, yeah, there you go. So. We're going to go ahead and wrap it up. I uh, want you to see what we're going to be talking about in the after show. This is uh, from the National Post. It is entitled, Bring on the Shirtless Men. Why it's acceptable to objectify the male body, but not the female one. Despite all the navel-gazing of male celebrities, women's sexuality isn't taken seriously. And that's why male objectification isn't as much of a threat. So, we'll be uh, reading this in the after show. Ooh, ooh, I hope you guys have your chemo ready. Um, and if you want to join us in the after show, you'll have to do that by becoming a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash honey badger radio. Um, one level of patronage will get you into our discord server to hang out with us. I think another one will let you watch the shows and then yet another one will let you be a part of the conversation. You can jump into the chat with us and talk to us about the stuff. So be sure to do that if you want to be a part of it. These are always fun. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we look forward to seeing new faces. We see new people all the time. You know, we're growing little by little. So please do that. Also, don't forget to feed the badger. Uh, go to feedthebadger.com to see what we got going on. We're going to be doing a stream this Friday. It's a fundraising stream. Um, I, I don't want to talk about what it's about. I'll let Allison do it, but definitely look out for it. It's going to be fun. We're going to have guests on friday it should be a good time and uh yeah we're looking forward to seeing you guys so with that said i want to thank my co-hosts mike mike and hannah for coming on this episode of hbr news and as always i want to thank you guys for joining us and watching please uh, like share and subscribe also comment if you uh if you, you know have some thoughts on this oh uh somebody named the uncanny x-man says keep up the good work guys hi from scotland hey what's up so thank you for the for the um, for the super chat. Ten ten pounds. Thank you for that. All right. Well, that, anyway, with that said, we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. It's uh, good to see you guys on the show. We'll see you guys next time on HBR News. Have a great day, everybody.